try. So today we will be implementing previous design I uploaded on my channel and let's dive into this. This effect is generally noticed on the sites that won on awards.com and this is inspired from Nicolo's article on CodeRop. Here we will be focusing on 3JS or WebGL libraries. So I won't be teaching HTML or CSS. I have used Pug but this is the HTML file. I have attached all the images as a link to the title. But I have turned down the opacity and, and I have set the display to none so it won't be visible because we want to use this as a texture to our plane in 3JS. So let's start with 3JS first. So first let's code a basic 3JS setup where we will declare our renderer, scene, camera and geometry. I will be calling on resize function and our update loop from the main script where I have already set up this on resize and I, in update function I am already calling a request animation frame which will be calling an canvas update function as well. Ok so let's start with our renderer. We will get a webgl renderer where we will pass parameters of alpha as true and our anti alias as true. Alpha will allow us to make the canvas transparent and anti alias will remove the zigzag pattern that you will find on either plane or any geometry on 3JS. So we will set size of our renderer, window inner width and window inner height and we will set the pixel ratio to 1. We will append the canvas to body. So the renderer.dom element is actually an canvas. Now let's create a scene. We will add 3JS scene. And then we will add a camera, a perspective camera. So in perspective camera, we will have our field of view to 45. We will set the nearest point of the camera as 0.1 and the farthest point of the camera as 1000. So we can see nearest and the farthest to 1000. We will set the position of the camera on Z axis at 5 units back so that we can get a proper view of our geometry. Now let's create our geometry. In geometry, we will get a plane geometry with 1 unit of height and 1 unit of width. So at first we will get a normal material for our plane because later we will change it to shader material. We will add both our geometry and our material to a new mesh. So let's add that plane to our scene. So we need few events. First one is resize. We want to implement a resize function that will resize our plane geometry to the size of our browser. Later we will also add mouse move functions. Ok so in resize function we will get width of our window and height of our window when we resize the browser. We will set the aspect ratio of our camera to width by height of the window. We will also update the projection matrix. And then we will set our renderer to a new size with the updated width and height. We will call this resize function on the window.event listener with resize as an event. Then we will add our render loop and we will call the update function. In update function we will render we will render the scene and camera. Remember we also have to set request animation frame in the update function. I have already set it up in the main script. Ok so let's see the result. Ok so let's fetch all our images that are attached to the link. We will get all the images in a single array. So for that we will write a function which will return the array of all images. We will get all the links which will be containing a title and the corresponding image. So we will spread the links into array items. Then we will map the items with a single item and its index. This way it will return an array of the objects which will containing a link, its corresponding image and its index. In the main script when all the images are loaded, we can call the items array and pass it on into the canvas so that we can use that data to create a texture to the plane that will correspond to a link. Let's see if we are getting that data correctly. So as you can see we have an array with 4 objects. Each object has an element which is a link, its corresponding image and its index. To use this data, specifically our images, we have to add a texture loader into 3JS. So for that we have to create a texture loading function in canvas. So we will start with a function. So this function has to be an asynchronous function. As said in the article. Because the textures we are loading are essentially in images. Till all the images are loaded as a texture we have to wait. 
if you are passing that image as a texture to the shader and if it won't be loaded fully then we will get a blank image to resolve this we will use promises so let's start with the texture loader we will loop the array and each object will be passed to a loader for that loader the image and the index of the link will be passed to a another function and pushed into promises after all the textures are loaded and pushed into the promise array we will return the promises and for each promise we will set the item texture to same as the promise texture that we got from the image so when all the promises are resolved we will pass the loaded texture into each promise that promise will be containing an item with the same index at the, as the image now let's add the texture function so in load texture function we will be having an extra loader from 3js a image source and the index when all the promises are resolved and there won't be any and if there won't be any url errors then we will be using the loader to load our texture so when the image source that is our url will be successfully added to the load function then we will add a callback function so now we so now we will load these textures onto the plane and to load that we will be using a shader a shader material shader material is essentially a glsl language that is the whole different type of language consider like c c or c++ kind of language it is not the part, it is not the regular javascript but it can be embedded in the javascript so to do that we will replace the mesh normal material to the mesh shader material where we will be using uniforms uniforms are basically and parameters that are passed to a vertex shader and the fragment shader vertex shader is used to manipulate the vertex that is present on the geometry so all the geometry has some vertices from which it is made minimum of 3 vertices are needed to form a triangle and to manipulate that 3 vertices a vertex shader is needed in combination with that we have a fragment shader fragment basically means a pixel or the chunk of pixel we shade or color the part of that pixel or the chunk of pixel by using the fragment shader we will also enable the transparency of the shader material to true right now we want to apply the image of our link on to the shader so first so first of all we will get an texture as a uniform we will name the parameter as a u texture and set its value to null so we have to implement two shaders a vertex shader and a fragment shader so let's start with the vertex shader so this is our offset so this is our u offset and this is the u alpha now let's implement this in vertex shader and the fragment shader so in vertex shader we will will call the uniform vector to u offset and the varying vector to be uv v uv has the uv coordinates of our geometry and the offset value comes from the uniforms we set in javascript so we will define pi to the value and we will and we will set main function where we will set the v uv to the original uv of our mati of our geometry and the gl position is predefined in the vertex shader so we will add the projection matrix and the model view matrix multiply with the position that is predefined of in the geometry so now we will add the fragment shader we will set the precision to medium floor and then we will add the uniform of our texture simply to do is used to get the image as a texture or any other use and then we will write the vuv that we get from the vertex shader now in the main function we will enable the vector color in which we will pass the function texture 2d we will pass the function texture 2d with u texture and the vuv we will pass that color and u alpha into vec4 so with vec3 and a float we will essentially we will get a vec4 we will pass it to the frag color gl flag color is used as a fragment so we have to import the vertex shader and the fragment shader so of course we won't see any texture on the plane because we haven't passed anything yet but to see whether it's working or not let's pass this when we change the u alpha to 1.0 it turned the color into black because we don't have any texture yet but if we pass here v uv and set the other parameter to 0.0 we will get a gradient that corresponds to the uv of our current plane now we want some function to apply the texture of our image first of all we need a function that will apply the image of the link to that for link title for example when we for example 
When we hover over the theater, we want the theater image to replace the plane. Same with the hotel cafe. And then we want the image of the plane to follow the cursor around the window. When cursor leaves the container of the link, the opacity of the plane that is the U alpha as we, as we passed on the uniform should fade to the zero. And again when we hover over the link, it should animate to one. To do that, first we have to pass all the functions to each of the links. So we will call an event listener function where we will loop through each item and add the event listener mouse over. And in the callback, in, and in the callback we will call a mouse over function where we will pass an index of that item. So similarly, we want a mouse move function when we move the cursor on our window plane to follow the cursor and so we will call the on mouse move and then we want to fade the opacity of plane to zero when we leave the area of our link that is the link wrapper so we will add an event listener with mouse leave only so in the mouse over function we will set the index that we will set an index to a temporary index and we will check if all our images are loaded if the images are loaded then we will call the mouse enter function which will animate the u alpha value of the uniforms to 1 then again we will check the index of our value call the target change function which will change the texture of our target for example if i am on theater and i again hover over the theater then it will return but if I am on theater link and I will go over to the hotel link, it will change the plane texture to that another image. So on target change function, we will pass the index to an items array which will be stored as the current item. So now we need a function that will scale so not every image has to be a plane or a rectangle or in the perfect scale. So we need something dynamic that will change the size of plane as well. To do that. We will calculate an image ratio that is the natural width divided by the natural height of the current image. We will store that image ratio as the width of our new plane. So first we will call the three vector3 three function of the 3JS which will be called as scale and we will pass the image ratio on the x axis and we will keep y and the z axis as 1. So we will pass the u texture value with the current item texture that is the image of our texture. Now we will add the computed scale to the plane. Now to implement the mouse move function, we want a vector2 function of 3JS. So we will give them this mouse with 0.8 and 0.5 so that the mouse value have some data in it preloaded. In the article, developer has provided this function where he calculate the minimum value of in with respect to the out of max and min. This function will help us to move the plane in x axis and y axis with respect to the viewport. Now we will add the viewport object and the view size image. In viewport image, we will have client width and the client height of our container and its aspect ratio. And in view size, in view size, we want the film of in view size, we want the FOV height and width of the of the viewport with respect to the camera. Now this is the handy function which will make the units of our WebGL to recalculate as if, as if we are doing it in CSS. So this is a neat little trick. Many developers use this trick. Many developers use this trick to implement the virtual objects in the WebGL with respect to the DOM element. Now let's implement the mouse move. In mouse move, we will divide the client text data with the width of viewport. This will normalize our value from minus 1 to 1. The same way we'll do for y. With help of the map function that, that we put into the constructor, we will map the minimum of minus 1 to 1 position minimum and maximum of the R input that is minus 1 to 1 to the maximum position of U size minus 5 to the positive same way we will do this for height now we will update the position using X and Y to animate on the updated position we will use the reset function where we will animate the X position and the Y position 
and on completing the animation we want to update the position of the plane so this position update function will update the value of our offset in the vertex shutter that we are using to deform the image we will clone the position of plane with multiplying scalar that, that will multiply minus 0.25 to this position then we will pass the offset value to our from u offset value now let's implement the mouse leave function where we where we want that when the cursor goes out of the of the link container the opacity of the plane should fade to zero then we will pass the g shape where we will animate the u alpha of the uniforms of our fragment shader we are doing everything correct but still the image is blank we are not getting texture and the reason is because we are not yet passing any item into the texture loading function. So to do that, the first we will get a canvas onload function in the main script which will implement it in the canvas. This function will set the items and call the event listener where if the texture loading promises are finished then we will pass the is loaded pack equal to 2 and we will call our and we will call our mouse over function with the temporary index. Now let's see the result. First we get a blank image and then hovering over the theater we got an image. Same for hotel, pizzeria and cafe. But it doesn't fade away the opacity. So the reason, so the reason is in vertex shader we have implemented 1.0. Instead of this we have to get u alpha. So now by default the opacity of our texture will be 0. On hovering over any image, we will get opacity to 1. Now we want to implement that stretchy and sticker distortion effect on this image when we hover over from one link to the another. Now in vertex shader, to deform the cow that we want, we will use the u offset value of the view forms. So for that we will initiate a deform function where we will get a position uv and offset value. We will set the position x value to the current position x value plus the sign value of the current uv on the y axis multiplied by with pi. Now remember to end it with the semicolon as GLSL is a strict language. Now we will return the position. To use this deform function into our main function we will first set a new position then we will set the new position to our deformed position. Now instead of position, we will here use the new position. Now let's see the result. Ok so it is very much distorted. The reason is we haven't used any offset value. We will implement the offset value in here. Did you see that jewel effect? But we also want this in the y axis. So let's implement that too. Instead of x, we'll set it to y, and in u, we want the, we want the x position. You can experiment with the deform function. Instead of this curve, you can also do the pixelated values or RGB shift. There are many things to implement. So experimenting with vertex shader, I got this effect. So this is it. Keep learning. Keep having fun. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.